Hello fellow Whovians and welcome to another episode of Diagnosing Doctor Who. Here's my review for arachnids in the UK. Why spiders? Why spiders? Why did it have to be spiders? In one way it's extremely clever that it's spiders because loads of people hate spiders. It's a very common thing to have arachnophobia. On another, on the other side, I don't I didn't want them to use spiders because I hate spiders and I have never been as itchy after an episode as I have after this one. Even though the spiders were huge, I still feel like there's like loads of spiders like running around my arms ever since. Which I suppose is a good thing, kind of shows that the episode had an impact of some sort. But I could I hate spiders. So as soon as I heard there was going to be spiders in this episode, I was just like, no, why does it have to be spiders? This is a weird thing to note, but when like the TARDIS like materialized at the start of the episode, I don't know, just hearing like it landing, it really sort of got me like in the gut because I've missed it. I've said before how much I've missed Doctor Who and just hearing like the noise of the TARDIS as it materialized outside Yaz's flats, it was just... It was very nostalgic for me and I kind of got that kind of pinch of excitement that I used to always get whenever I was watching Doctor Who and the TARDIS would materialise and you know the adventure's about to start and that kind of thing. I know that's kind of cheesy but it's, it, I, I can't help it. It's just how I feel that sort of just, it just happened. I love the new vortex as well. I think it's very beautiful and I find it very interesting actually that the vortex changes every time the doctor changes. The only time it stayed the same I think was when Chris Eccleston turned into David Tennant. Um, that was the only time the vortex ever stayed the same as like the vortex kind of adheres itself to the doctor and what face the doctor has and it's always changing. But it's interesting to see like different ways of interpreting it but it's always kind of like in the same kind of is spiral the right word I don't know like met my sister and I when we were younger and we used to watch like Tom Baker's Doctor Who we used to always compare it to like a slide like it looked like you were sliding down a big massive tube slide so if 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 that makes any sense to anyone it it, I, it makes sense in my head I don't know if it makes sense like it, to anyone else but I, I it always stays in the kind of same tubed kind of shape but it's interesting to see the different variations of that that you can get and I really like the one for this series I think it's beautiful I love it I love the intro as well I've said that before and the intro is always very similar to what the vortex looks like and it's all just it's all very beautiful and I like it so we have the obligatory this is it moment where the companions and the doctor kind of say like oh we got home we're finally you know here we, we have to part our ways kind of thing I feel like that's as I say, it's very obligatory for like every companion that didn't immediately make the decision to jump on to the TARDIS. Like Rose immediately jumped onto the TARDIS. There wasn't like a whole confusion or as it was with Martha, the whole reward trip. The every time there's something like that, there always has to be the whole. Oh well, you know, we're not. I'm gonna go home now. No more traveling with you, kind of thing. Um, if. I, there was that wee moment and I just love how like as soon as Yaz was like tea the doctor was like yes yes tea because it, it shows how different each variation of the doctor is because David Tennant's doctor would rarely ever stop for tea at anyone's house he didn't stop for Christmas dinner at Donna's house the only time I think he really did it was when oh what was his name in the next doctor Jack, Jackson Lake was at it when he offered Christmas dinner, I think that's the only time, uh, excluding Rose, because it's Rose. I don't like that excuse saying it's Rose, but we have to admit that Rose was a bit different. Apart from her, Jackson Lake was the only time he ever accepted going into a house for like lunch or dinner or whatever. So seeing how it, different variations of the Doctor react to different things is very interesting to me. Matt Smith also came to Christmas dinner at Amy and Rory's house and you found out that they always set a table for them but this Doctor, Jodie's Doctor, is excited like she jumps at the opportunity because she doesn't want to be on her own again and she 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 just jumps at any opportunity to get to spend more time with her friends, her the people who have now become her friends and I just like that. I like the different variations and how 
nothing is the same and the Doctor has a different personality every time that I keep going to say he, I really need to get into the habit of saying she, but you know what I mean, every time she um, changes, she has a different sort of, not entirely a different personality, but a different way of reacting to certain things and I think that's very interesting to see in different situations. I find Yaz's family very believable. A problem that I had when Clara was in Doctor Who was that a lot of the people around her felt very fake and wooden and they didn't really feel like actual characters. Like for example the kids that she was babysitting, they it could have been because the actors weren't all that great but I don't think they were written very well, it felt very fake, it felt like they were just actors acting a character especially when they were on the moon and they were worrying about a Wi-Fi signal that that blew my mind that they actually thought that that would be a good idea to include in the episode but I suppose it was kind of like the older writers kind of being like huh? huh? Wi-Fi kids? yeah you, you, we know what we're talking about it's kind of like in the same way in this episode they say they have the doctor saying things like fam it's a bit like mm, can you not? because it's a bit cringy, like, oh they're one step away from saying the word meme in an episode and if that happens, oh my god, I will cringe into oblivion. But back to my original point, Yaz's family feel like an actual family. Her, interact her interactions with her sister was very believable, her interactions with her dad was very believable. It was, they felt like an actual family and they didn't, nothing was like forced and everything felt very natural and they felt like actual people. And I really appreciated it and enjoyed that. I, I think that you go to care more for people's family and their character if they're more believable because if they just feel like character like actual characters that were just written and they're not well acted or anything like that then if they get hurt or die then you don't really care you're just like eh. it's like so what if that makes any sense so i'm really glad that yaz's family feel believable in the same way that ryan's family felt believable ryan's grand grandmother and his granddad currently they were they're still very believable characters i really love them and it just makes you care more about them and worry more for their safety when they're traveling with the doctor and i think that's really important to have that kind of like you that care when you're watching the show graham's grieving process is very interesting i really appreciate i say appreciate a lot i've noticed that i've just i've sort of come conscious of that but i, I appreciate a lot of things i really appreciate that they are taking time to actually delve into graham's grieving process because grief is a very complicated thing, different people react to it in different ways but there still has to be a certain amount of respect given to the fact that they are grieving if that makes any sense because for example in Class, Doctor Who had a spin-off a couple of years ago called Class and this character lost his girlfriend in the first episode and he was grieving for one episode after it but then the episode after that, he was completely fine. It was like nothing had ever happened. Like this girl was literally like she exploded before his eyes. And it, it felt very disingenuous that all of a sudden like it wasn't even like this girl existed. This girlfriend who he loved, who died right before his eyes. It was like that never happened. And it, it felt very wrong. And it made the whole thing grieving that he the brief grief that he had for like the one episode it made that feel very disingenuous and very wrong and it just it just made the character less believable as i say it's really important i think for characters to feel real and feel like they're actually going through human emotions instead of just being characters written in a script that it just says oh such and such grieves and then that's it so I really appreciated that we've seen more of Graham's grieving process. He's, it sort of represented the fact that we could see how he could see his wife everywhere about the house and that's his reason for wanting to travel with the doctor because he knew that if he didn't go and get out there he would just stay in the house and constantly see her and hear her and smell her and he wanted to, he wanted more of let he wanted more for himself than that and he probably knew that his wife wanted more than that for him and I, I i just as i say i think it's important to portray things like grief with respect because it's a very complicated human emotion and it's something that you can't just say oh yeah this person meant a lot to this character 
and then they died, but oh, they just grieved for one episode, so that's it. That's all the grieving they need to do, because <laughs> that's not how grieving works, and, I, and I'm glad that they're putting the time and the effort into portraying his grieving process correctly and giving it the respect that it deserves, because Doctor Who doesn't have a very good history of that in terms of spin-offs anyway. When the first spider shows up, oh my god. <laughs> So the, the pull out of this episode is, is that this guy's building hotels on top of like, um, he's repurposing areas that have been closed down, but he built it on top of a landfill site and the landfill included spider corpses or something like that and it turned into like toxic waste and it kind of had like a Spider-Man effect and it all kind of, and they all kind of grew and oh my god, you see even here in the like the, like the tapping of like the the legs against the walls and stuff, oh, it really got me going. I made my skin crawl, and every time I saw them get bigger and bigger, and then there was that big bastard mother in the ballroom. Oh my god, it made me thankful that I don't live in Australia. the The biggest spider I can handle is about that size, and I still have to get my mum to kill it because I hate the noise they make when you you know you step on it and it goes. I I just hate spiders. I this was not a good episode for me in terms of my comfort because just everything was turning me. <laughs> but, but not everything's about me, so... <sighs> when it dragged the bodyguard away, I was like, oh my god, that's fucking grim. Like, it had him all wrapped up and it just dragged him away. That was fucking grim. And then you saw them, like, hanging from, like, the ceiling and you're like, Jesus Christ, superstar. Like... <sighs> It actually reminded me of a thing from one of my favourite book series by Darren Chan where like this character was hanging upside down but that's not relevant, it just made me think of that and I was just like, ooh, it's just, it's very uncomfortable and very gritty if that makes any sense and that's not, that's not me um, criticising, that's me just saying that it's very, it, it makes you feel a bit unseated and on edge and sometimes that's what do what episodes like for Doctor Who have to be like. They have to make you feel a bit uncomfortable because sometimes sometimes aliens aren't nice and sometimes giant mutant spiders are just acting on instinct and mm, wrapping you up in webs and hanging you from the ceiling. <laughs> One thing that I would wish that, that Doctor Who would stop doing, I wish they would stop involving politics. I know that this is going to be a weird complaint considering the fact that in New Who there was so much going on in like Downing Street and with Prime Ministers and stuff but I don't know maybe I was a dumbass as a kid and I didn't notice anything reflecting on the current Prime Minister or the current pro political climate maybe I didn't notice any of that because I was very young when New Who started but when it was in Downing Street and the Prime Minister was mentioned and even when the President was mentioned sometimes the President of the United States it was all fake it was like fake pr pr Prime Minister fake president, fake, you know, fake politics that were going on. Like, it was very real politics, but it wasn't, like, real as in reflecting on the real world. Like, we weren't seeing, what was his name, David Cameron? We weren't seeing him on it, and we weren't seeing people mention him. But it feels very wrong when they start mentioning, like, Trump, especially considering the controversy that surrounds Trump. I don't feel like it's an appropriate situation and to have this addressed in Doctor Who. I think I'm putting, I, 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 is it, um, I don't know how to put this. I would feel the exact same way if someone mentioned like Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders or something like that. When you start bringing real names into it, it starts conf confusing like how real everything is because, okay, so Donald Trump actually exists in this version of reality, but David Cameron didn't around the time David Cameron was Prime Minister. Am I making sense here? I don't even know if his name was David Cameron. I think it was. <laughs> I don't do anything with politics. I, I I hope I'm making sense here because sometimes they have fake like politicians and sometimes they mention the real ones and considering all the stuff that surrounds Donald Trump it, fe it felt very awkward and just clunky shoved in there and it was just kind of like uh, kids kind of felt like a hey Donald Trump sucks doesn't he kids? It, it, it didn't fit for me, it didn't work. I just, just keep that stuff under Doctor Who, please. Thanks. 
Jodie has her moments where she feels like the doctor to me. Like, it, I don't know whether it's the writing or how she portrays it, but there are moments where she feels like the doctor to me. It's just not an ongoing thing. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have to apologise, it's what I think. But there are particular moments where she says particular things or acts particular way, and I'm like, oh, that's the doctor, but it still doesn't feel like him, her, whoever he is now to me. I love Jodie, I love her acting, it's just she doesn't feel like the doctor to me, she feels like a time lady, just you know, a time lady helping out that they call the doctor. And that's still the way, that's still where, where I feel, I'm still in the same very, same stance on that. Um, I wish that I could, I could feel her, but so far still nothing, but if I pretend she's a time lady trying to help, it's a lot more enjoyable. I'm sorry, you can't make me feel sorry for spiders. It's not happening. <laughs> I'm one of those bastards dead, but no, don't use guns. <laughs> don't shoot them. Again, that was more of politics being brought into it, like gun politics and shit. He's like, why can't you guys be like Americans and shit people? And I was just like, I don't agree with shitting people, but you can shoot all those fucking spiders if you want. I don't fucking care. Don't listen to the doctor. Do You do you, sir. You get rid of those bitches. And I know it was sad, the spider was going too big, it was going to suffocate, blah, 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 but nah, nah. Shoot that bitch down, get that bitch dead and off the wall and off, out of that hotel, just do what is necessary. Because I'm sorry, I do not feel bad for spiders. I have a friend called Neve who doesn't like me killing spiders, but I don't care. I kill them anyway because I just... They came into my house, they knew what they were doing when they come into my house. So you know what, that's the consequences of coming into my house. You die. So just, I wanted all the spiders to be shot, but fine, they're fine enough in the panic room, just, I feel bad for us to clean up all the corpses, but that's the kind of thing that you don't really get mentioned in any, in any sci-fi show. I was like, who's going to clean up the corpses? That's something that's never addressed in any sort of sci-fi show, so. I honestly thought that Ryan was playing Man's Not Hot, and I got a laugh out of that. If you don't know what Man's Not Hot is, you really gotta listen to it. It's certainly an interesting song. To, for, for if that's one word for it. I love that they always have to ask the companions, are you sure you want to come to the TARDIS? It's like, fuck yeah! Universe and shit, universe, time, space, fuck yeah! I'm glad there's a lot less dicking about with the whole, are they official companions or not? Because it, cause since they, they finally got back to their own time, blah 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 blah, I felt like if they were going to dick about with that a bit more, it was going to be a bit weird, like, with Martha, like, they dicked about with whether she was a real companion or not until, like, episode 6 or 7. It was until the Lazarus experiment where she wasn't an official companion. And that was just, that was just, <laughs> that was just annoying. Like, just, just, just call her an official companion and be done with it. So they're all official companions now. They're all travelling in time and space and it's all great. And it was a very good episode, yeah. There, I could do with less of the real life politics being brought into it. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that one, but... It just doesn't feel right to me. I just don't like it. It, it. it just feels very wrong, if that makes any sense. So, still a very strong episode. Still don't feel like Jodie's the doctor, but I can't help how I feel. I'm just being honest here, guys. I just, it's not, I just can't, I'm not feeling it. Still love Jodie, though. I still love the cast, and I'm looking forward to next week's episode. And... Yeah, that's it. That's all my thoughts on arachnids in the UK. If you have any thoughts, disagreements, agreements, comment them down below. Like, comment and subscribe. Follow my social medias if you want to. Don't if you don't want to be there. I don't want you there if you don't want to be there. And I'll see you later, Whovians. And remember, just fucking kill the spiders, okay? None of this whole eco-life shit. Just, just fucking kill them, please. Please.